Argyle is the latest film from Matthew Vaughn that stars Henry Cavill, Bryce Dallas Howard, and Sam Rockwell, among a flurry of other amazingly talented actors, in a film that is so insane, I can't even begin to describe it to you. But, is that a good thing? What's up guys, welcome back to the Montyverse. We checked out Argyle, and boy, do I have a lot to say about it. What about you, Nikki? There's definitely a lot to talk about with this movie. Stuff yeah. expected from Matthew Vaughn, stuff that I was not expecting, and stuff that I wasn't expecting, but I guess I should have expected. Yes. I, I'm a bit in a frenzy right now. It was it was definitely a crazy experience at the film. But I know talking afterwards, me and you have slightly different opinions on it. Mm -hmm. So do you want to take the lead? What are your thoughts on Argyle? Overall, I do consider this a very solid movie. I don't think there's any aspect to it that I would say is weak. I think the action's great. I think performances are great. For me, I just felt a little bit more wanting, especially compared to you. Guys, if you've been watching this channel and you've been watching my reviews, there are types of movies that I love. First and foremost are good movies. Second are meme movies. I love a meme movie, a movie that knows exactly what kind of movie it is when they are making it. And I have to say, Argyle is the first meme movie of 2024, and I cannot be happier about it. This movie is Matthew Vaughn saying, hey, Am I going too far? And everyone around him saying, yeah, Matthew, I think you went too far. And him going, okay, I'm going to go further. <laughs> and to me, that was really exciting and fun to watch in the theater. I think this is a really fun movie. And there's so many Vaughn-isms, Matthew Vaughn-isms in this film. Uh, it's really hard not to like find something to like about it. And I think that's absolutely accurate. I think... Not to get into spoilers, I think a lot of the Vaughnisms and the meme worthy stuff is the strongest part of the film because one, it just separates itself from so many other films, yes. including Vaughn's own filmography, and they're just a blast, and I think done incredibly well. Yeah, and I think what's really cool about this movie is Matthew Vaughn, of course, got his name from satirizing the spy genre mm -hmm. with Kingsman, with the first mm -hmm. Kingsman movie. Uh, and I think this movie also revisits that. I think he's also satirizing the spy genre in this film, but doing so in a way that satirizes the sub-genres of the spy genre itself. So not only is he taking the piss out of the spy genre, but he's also, like, dissecting these sub-genres of spy films. Like, the Fast and the Furious franchise, the Fast Saga, has become a spy movie franchise at this point. I think there's a lot of poking fun at those movie, those types of movies in this film, while also telling a really fun spy story in and of itself. Mm -hmm. And I agree with you. I think the story itself is really solid. It goes in a bunch of crazy directions that cannot be overstated how much we probably were taken off guard by them and not yeah. expecting. Maybe this is a case of maybe stuff went a little bit over my head. I would say, I would not say this is like a Paul Verhoeven type satire. I think it's a very different... The way it approaches it is definitely different. And maybe some of it, like I said, just went over my head a bit. I, it felt like a little bit overly straightforward that I probably just didn't realize it. Um, but yeah. that's, where it, that's where, again, I didn't dislike any of it. It was more just kind of, okay, to me. Yeah, I think I picked up on a lot of that stuff more because, like I said, I love bad movies. <laughs> I really <laughs> love dumb, bad movies. And I love to poke fun at them. So I could recognize what the intentionality behind some shots and some mm -hmm. scenes where to the untrained eye, it may just look like, just generic action. I was going to say, which is fair, because I'll, full disclosure, I'm not the biggest action fan. No. I certainly don't watch them as much as you do. So a lot of that stuff, I think I'm also just not surprised by a lot of stuff anymore. Yeah. One thing I really did love about this movie, outside of the direction, mm -hmm. is the cast. I think it yeah. was so fun to see Bryce Dallas Howard and Sam Rockwell, to a certain extent, play against type mm -hmm. and do things that are very much outside of their comfort zone. Mm -hmm. I, I think that's a huge strength of the movie is everyone is great in this film. Um, and I think to some extent, like you said, everyone is doing something different. I don't yes. think there's any cast member who you can say, oh, I've seen them do exactly this before. Yeah, I mean, this film plays a lot with twists. There are a lot of twists and turns. It mm -hmm. plays a lot with subverting expectations intentionally and unintentionally. So there are a lot of characters and actors in this film, some of whom may be doing things you're used to seeing them do. Some of them may be playing against type, but you never know who is who. Mm -hmm. um, I will say that everyone's great. I don't think there's a bad performance in this movie mm -hmm. from Henry Cavill all the way down to minor roles like Ariana DeBose, mm -hmm. who did the thing. She did the thing. <laughs> she did the thing in this movie. Uh, I think everyone was really good and it's just... It takes a director like Matthew Vaughn to kind of get everyone on the same page and mm -hmm. let everyone know, like, this is the movie we're making. 
And I think everyone was really on board with the movie they were making. And you absolutely needed that because otherwise some scenes in this would have fallen absolutely yes. flat because this is a movie that is very funny at times and that is very action packed. And without people, I, for me, a lot of the standout does come from Sam Rockwell. Yes. And definitely in terms of humor, Brian Cranston is also very funny and so, so earnest, even though some of the stuff he says is so stupid. <laughs> Sam Rockwell is so charismatic. He can have yes. chemistry with a rock, I swear. That guy is so good. And uh, for for everyone wondering, yes, he does dance in this movie, but that's about all the spoilers you're going to get out of us. And I feel like that's almost like borderline. <laughs> no, I mean, not really. If Sam Rockwell's in the movie, he's going to dance. It's probably in his contract at this point. That's true. But we, like you said, we, let's not do say anything else. No, because if there's one thing you need to do is you need to see this movie as soon as it comes out because yeah. you don't want to have it spoiled for you because there's a lot of stuff to be spoiled. If you watch the trailer for this movie, you kind of know that they're leaning into multiple twists and mm -hmm. turns and it's not a straightforward film. And the trailer itself, I think, gives away some stuff that I wish they wouldn't have put in the trailer. Mm -hmm. It's really hard to sell this movie mm -hmm. because you can't really talk too much about it without kind of spoiling some things. And I think... The trailer does a really good job of skating the line by revealing some things, but not revealing nearly enough. I'll say the trailer's probably only stuff from the first act of this film. And I think that actually kind of works in its favor because I think the setup is already strong enough yes. that even if you didn't have every single twist, it would probably still be solid. But I think, like you said, going into it blind absolutely enhanced both our experiences. And even crazier, even if you think you can guess one thing... I would almost bet money that you're sure as hell not guessing everything. Yeah, because this, it's a numbers game. It's its its a numbers game because there are some things that I predicted. I love going into like mystery movies and spy movies and kind of trying to piece things together as the movie goes along. Mm -hmm. And there's some things that I nailed. And then I'm so busy trying to figure those things out that a twist will come like out of left <laughs> field. And I'll be like, oh, I wasn't, I wasn't anticipating that. No. So that, that, these are the movies that I love because they're always, they're throwing so much at you yeah. and they're trying to do so much. That you can, you won't see everything coming, but you just gotta enjoy the ride. You definitely have to because it's one of those cases to where I wouldn't say anything is complex to like comprehend in your mind, yeah. but it is a it's the gr the amount of things. Yes, um, but let's talk about some things I didn't like, and I think this is what's going to make the movie divisive, and I think this is why you had trouble catching up to the film until it really kicked into third gear later in the film. I think it drags a little in the beginning. The first and second act are definitely scenes that drag. Yeah, and again, to stress, I don't think anything is terrible, like this is no. the worst thing ever, but I think it's a it's underwhelming. Worst thing I could possibly say, which again, not even negative, but I think absolutely it's it feels different once they kick into gear. Yeah, and it's almost like a catch-22, unfortunately, because mm -hmm. while there are scenes that are slow and that are drag and that are very mundane, you kind of need those for the story that they're telling, unfortunately. They have to exist in order for you to view it in the way that Matthew Vaughn intends you to view this film. And you know what I'm thinking just right now? What? This, Hit me. This movie is potentially going to be a great rewatch. Absolutely. I think this is going to be a really fun film to rewatch because even watching it for the first time, it's a sensory overload. There's so <laughs> many things like in the background. Like He plays a lot with geometric shapes in this film. Oh, yeah. So there's tons of like triangles and the argyle pattern in this film, just in background yeah. and set design. We I was going to oh, say, go we just haven't talked about that. The It's shot beautifully. Yeah, it's a fantastically shot film. Gorgeous. Uh, I think this is something that Matthew Vaughn does well. The use of color. Mm -hmm. It's a very vibrant and saturated film, but in a way that doesn't make it feel cheap. It yeah. feels just fun. And and the the use of color, is, and there's, scene, there's a scene that I'm referring to very specifically that you will know when you watch this movie. It's just, I just loved it. I just really got a pop out of my chair. I was like <laughs> smiling from ear to ear. It's a really fun time, and I think Matthew Vaughn's direction plays into that extremely well because, like Nikki said, this is a gorgeous movie. Oh, absolutely. And honestly, it's not a particularly short one, but I... No, it's about 220. And I actually don't feel like it dragged for the most part. Other, no. than, other than those parts that you mentioned the beginning did. Otherwise, I think it started to like kick in really well. Yeah, well, it, it's a slow burn, but once you get going... You're going, mm -hmm. and you're and you're and you're going, and it doesn't really feel it's long, but not super long in terms of like movies are pretty long nowadays. Yeah, it's pretty average in terms of movie length, but two twenty is still a huge investment for a lot of people. But I do think you will enjoy the film. I do think it's a really fun movie mm -hmm. to to sit through and. <laughs> I mean, listen, I don't I don't even want to say too much more else. I'm afraid. I'm afraid that I'm going to give something away. Speaking of Argyle, one of the craziest things about this movie is probably the inception of it. 
There's something that we found out after watching it that I think is insane that wasn't pushed more in the marketing for this film. Mm -hmm. And that is the fact that this movie was somehow made before the first book was even released. Because it, apparently it's based off of a book written by Ellie Conway, who is the character that Bryce Dallas Howard plays in the movie. It's wild because you found this out before I did and you yeah. were telling me about this. So I immediately started Googling. And there's like some borderline conspiracy theory stuff going yeah. around. Firstly, is this even like a real book? Was this written by Taylor Swift became one of the big that talking points? That was wild. Like somehow people assumed that Taylor Swift was the author and using a pseudonym, <laughs> Ellie Conway, and she wrote Argyle. It's crazy. The book just came out like two weeks ago, two or three weeks ago, yeah. January 9th, I believe. Right. And then we were also kind of looking into, well, what came first? Because yeah. obviously that was published what before the first? movie. And I tried looking for when they were announced and they were both basically announced like summer 2021. Yeah. It's crazy. Is So there's so much mystery behind the book mm -hmm. because what's even crazier is the more you look into it, like the more, the weirder it gets. Somehow yeah. this is, the movie is based off of the fourth book. Which is, which is just insane. Like, I, I don't know. Like, where are the other three books? Where, yeah. Are they coming out? How did Matthew Vaughn find these books? Uh, it's just cr really crazy. And I, and I definitely recommend looking into it because I think it will enhance your viewing experience of the movie. And that's the only reason why we're mentioning it now. Because having that in mind is just adds on to the layers of fun and complexity that this movie has. Absolutely. And honestly, there's a chance we'll never find out the truth about any of this. That's true. Nikki... On a scale of one to five Argyle books, what do you rate Argyle? Oh, man. So, like I said, I, I would not say this is a perfect film, and there's probably some stuff that just didn't gel with me as much as you and others, but I think there's so many strong aspects to it. I definitely am not in favor of damaging books, but I will be giving this <laughs> a three and a half out of five books. Whoa! I'm, I'm shocked. That is a fantastic score for this movie. I think I think uh, that's actually surprisingly higher than I thought you were going to go. I, I can't discount the things that are great about it, honestly. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot to love. And here's the funny thing. I love this movie. I think it's a really fun movie. I think it, there's some great acting performances in here. I think there's great visuals. But there are flaws. And it, like I said, it's a pretty dumb movie. <laughs> it is a solid three and a half books, Argyle books. Which is weird because I did not think we were going to have the same score on this I one. didn't either. I'm surprised yours isn't high. It's a strong, it's a, str listen, it's a meme movie. At the end of the day, it is a meme movie and I love it with all of my heart. It is a very strong three and a half Argyle books. I think you should, guys should check this movie out. It's definitely mm -hmm. worth the price of admission. Yeah. And see it before it gets spoiled. Yes, absolutely. If you guys like this video, make sure to give it a huge thumbs up. If you're new to the channel, subscribe and hit the notification bell to stay up to date on all of our latest content. If you want to check out our other reactions and reviews, click the link on the page. Until next time, guys, stay versed.